All right, the other day I shot a vlog, a video showing you my vlogging setup or a setup I use for vlogging on the A6500 right over here, that chair. And I really liked the look that I got out of my Canon 60D right here. Now on that camera, I have a picture profile that is called Ray's Wave, but it's a modified version of ProLost Flat. And I want to compare these two shots on the 6500, find a profile that comes close to that profile or a profile that lets me color grade so that it's fairly close to the 60D, which is the look that I like. If I can get that out of the A6500 and maybe with some added dynamic range, we also have a higher bit rate. Maybe it would be even better to work with in post-production. So that's what this test is all about. All right, so what are some of the things I learned with this test video? I thought I was shooting on Cine 1. It turned out that PP4, because I got them mixed up, see my video, so you can tell what they're actually called when someone refers to them. PP4 was faithful. That was a happy accident. And a little secret about video production or anything that's creative, designing a graphic, you name it. Happy accidents happen probably more often than you think, especially for me, or certainly they do happen for me. And these often become some of my best moments in a video or anything else I'm producing. So learn to embrace those happy accidents, actually look for them, hope they happen and go with it because those might be those things that separate you from someone else it may become your style. They may be happening subconsciously, who knows, but you'll find these happy accidents and they'll work. In this case, I just used the wrong profile but it ended up being a match to, or close enough of a match to the Canon 60D and the picture profile I was using on that. So I found that out. I wouldn't have found that out before because I wouldn't have used the faithful profile because on the Canon 60D, they also have faithful and I've really never used it because I didn't like the way it colored the image. And that is really, it seems that it is sort of skews towards red. So I didn't use that and I wanted a flatter profile. Well. In this case, it worked out and ended up being the winner or close enough to a match on the 60D. I also found out that having an image to color grade against, in this case, I had the exact same shot. So it was really easy to compare, but having some type of image, a look that you like, something that you can compare against, that helps a lot in color grading. Color grading is really tough. I am not a colorist by any means. I wouldn't even say I have a consistent color at all. I'm always experimenting and learning. So if you have something you like, an inspiration image that you can put up and color grade against, that actually worked out really good in this case. And it was easier for me to color grade, for example, the S log, which is typically more difficult to color grade. I was able to really adjust it so I could match what I was going for against the 60D. So as far as this test is concerned, I would be more likely to use faithful, but the conditions would have to be right. One, I'd have to be looking to get that image, that same color straight out of the camera. That would be one case where I would use it. Two, that I was shooting in sort of a similar environment. And this one, I had a lot of wood tones and that skewing of the red really gave me a look that I liked, a really warm look. And I was shooting with almost direct sunlight, barely diffused back here by the coverings on my door. So if I was shooting in similar conditions, I would be more likely to use the faithful profile to get the look of the 60D straight out of the camera. But again, it would always depend on 
where I'm shooting, the environment I'm shooting in, and what I'm really going for in the final image. And it did seem to me that the Canon 60D colors, I mean, Canon's known for their color. Sony sort of has an infamous green shift to it. That's why I use the EOS HD color profile. That's why I went out and purchased it. It's just a PDF that tells you how to set up the camera. But the Canon seemed to be more accurate in the colors, in the whites, and I noticed in my gray pants, as well as the cushion on the chair, that the Sony did seem to skew a little green. And I'm not sure I was actually ever able to get it back exactly where I wanted it, or exactly to match the Canon. I didn't. The Sony was definitely sharper, but my 60D is really old. It could be the lens, it could be a dirty sensor, it could be a lot of things. I do think the Sony a6500 and the 28 millimeter that I'm using is probably sharper, most definitely. It looks like that across all my image, but there's a big disparity between those two cameras, so I don't hold too much weight on that. But the colors, I think, are something I have to work more with in the Sony to get something that I really like or that is more accurate right out of the camera. And for the video as a whole, I'm happy with the results. I took the 60D image, put it up against a couple different color profiles on the Sony, and I found something that matched the profile that I was using or like to use on my Canon. I'm gonna use a whole bunch of different color profiles. You need to go out and run your own tests. And after that issue of color correction, getting color accurate colors, color accurate colors, getting accurate colors, Color grading is subjective. It's highly subjective. You need to learn uh, what you like and color grade for that. There's so many good tools. Uh, Final Cut and both Premiere have great color grading tools now built right into them that let you really mess around with the image. I like to put an adjustment layer above, color grade that so that the underlying image always stays the way it is, and then I can just really play with it. But go out, test, do a bunch of stuff like this for yourself, color grade. Uh, you can buy presets and LUTs, and you know, I think that's one thing that I could go crazy on is LUTs with this new Sony a6500, but there's plenty you can tweak on your own. I'm making it up as I go. I watch tutorials like you find here on YouTube and learn how to color grade that way. Start with the basics, color correction, getting those colors accurate, and then add your own style to it. All right, ask questions in the comments and I will see you next time.